Hello, user testing community. It is Mike McDowell once again from the solutions consulting team here at User Testing, back with another tip of the week. Now, this is a super special new feature alert tip of the week. It's a feature that I've been asked about a bunch of times, and it is finally here. So every now and again, someone asks me the question about, Mike, what do we do when the study doesn't fill? And I said, well, when does that happen, right? It, 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 it happens very rarely. With user testing's contributor network, it just happens very rarely. But sometimes it does happen. And so what do we do? Now, in the past, people would have to go call support and say, hey, my study's not filling. Or they'd call their CSM and say, my study's not filling. Can you take a look at anything that might be wrong? And, and then that might come back to me. We'd go look at the screener questions and try to see if there was an obvious problem. Sometimes you put in a double must select when you didn't mean to, and it's very rare that people would pick those two things together. Um, or there might be some other problem where you're requiring a very, very uh, specific niche of person when it's not really necessary to test the usability issue to have someone from a specific industry or job or et cetera. So we take a look at those, we make some, we make some suggestions. But now, we have released something called screener guidance. And I gotta say, I'm a little bit embarrassed because for the past day and a half, I've been trying to run a study with screeners complicated enough to not fill so that I could demonstrate this with an actual study. But alas, my studies kept filling. It, no matter how complicated I made them, they would eventually fill. And so the screener guidance would not kick in. So I'm gonna show this to you from the knowledge base in user testing university, uh, but it is amazing. So. Here we go. So I switch over here to the screen. This is in the knowledge base here. It says guidance for troubleshooting screener questions. As I said, this is the type of thing that would have come back to me as CSM or support in the past. And so, or another SE. And I, so here uh, we scroll down and we're all talking about screener guidance. And so what we see here is um, after a certain number of contributors attempt your screeners and some sessions are not filled, a message will appear right on top of your, uh, your sessions screen. So you can see these are the pending sessions, not picked up yet. And it says here, view the pass rates. So you can just, you can click on this and that's gonna take you into actually the edit screener screen, which now has on it, you can see screener question one, less than 10% passed. Two and number two, more than 80% passed. Number three, more than 50% passed. And number four, less than 20% passed. So we know right away that if we're looking at this from the perspective of a funnel, the top of the funnel should be the widest, right? So, and it gets narrower, less people as you get down toward the bottom. But in this case, our first screener question is so specific that less than 10% of people are, are fitting the bill. So we can look at that screener. Maybe that's totally appropriate, but there may be a problem. And then as we scroll down, you know, the second question, third question seem to be all right. And then the fourth question again is very, very specific. So you have a very specific question at the start, a very specific question at the end, but now at least we know that we can look into those questions and make sure that everything is actually correct. And so then, because we're in the edit mode, we can actually just, when you click into one of these screener questions, you can change the acceptance criteria, you can add another option, you can remove options, and you can, in fact, actually just remove the screener question altogether if that would be the appropriate move. And then once you've made changes, there is going to be a little button underneath this that says relaunch screener. I'm not sure if it, yeah, it's right here, relaunch the screener. So once you do that, you should see your studies actually start to fill. You don't have to get contact anybody. You can do it all on your own. It's a really amazing feature. It gives you a little bit more clarity into what is going on with your studies, when they're filling or when they're not filling, I should say, and just basically uh, the ability to massage those screener questions to still find the right person, but either correct any mistakes or you know, make sure that you're not being overly restrictive in your screeners. So hopefully, None of you have to use this feature. <laughs> I usually say, hopefully, I want to see you using more of it. But hopefully, none of you have to use it. But in the event that your study doesn't fill, here's the option for you. If you do use it, feel free to ping me. Let me know if it worked or not. Um, that's going to be it for now. But don't worry. I'll be back again in seven days with another user testing tip of the week.